Chapter 2 of Blubber. That's what you're going to be for Halloween? Linda lives in Hidden Valley. So do Wendy, Caroline, Bobby, and a bunch of other kids. It's a big group of houses with a low brick wall around it and a sign that says, Welcome to Hidden Valley. Speed limit, 25 miles per hour. Across the street, there is another sign saying, Watch our children. It's called Hidden Valley because there are a million trees. And in the summer, you can't see any of the houses. Nobody told me this. It's something I figured out by myself. My stop is next. Me and Tracy are the only ones who get off there. The Wu family lives across the road from us. They have a lot of animals. All of this doesn't mean we live in the country. It's kind of pretend country. That is, it looks like country because of all the woods, but just about everyone who lives here works in the city. Like my mother and father. I don't know one single farmer, unless you count the woman who sells us vegetables in the summer. Can you come over? Tracy asks as we collected the mail from our mailboxes. As soon as I change, I told her, bring your stamps, Tracy said, I will. Me and Tracy are practically professional stamp collectors. We both have the Master Global album. And I have this deal going with my father. If I let my nails grow between now and Christmas, he will give me $25 to spend in Gimbel's, which has the best stamp department in the whole world. So even though it is just about killing me, I'm not going to bite my nails. Sometimes I have to sit on my fingers to keep from doing it. When I got home, Kenny was waiting at the front door. He was holding his Guinness Book of World Records in one hand and with the other was shoving a cupcake into his mouth. Did you know the oldest woman to ever give birth to a baby was 57 years old? As he talked, he blew crumbs out of his mouth. So, uh, I said to show I wasn't interested, because if Kenny gets the idea I'm interested, he will tell me facts from his Book of World Records all day. So, that means Grandma is too old to have a baby. Well, of course she is. She's past 60. And Mrs. Sandmeyer's too old, too. Mrs. Sandmeyer is our housekeeper. She takes care of me and Kenny after school. Too old for what? She asked as we walked into the kitchen. Too old to have a baby, Kenny said. Mrs. Sandmeyer laughed. <laughs> Who says so? My book of world records, Kenny told her. The oldest woman to give birth was 57 and you're 58. Don't remind me, Mrs. Sandmere said. Mrs. Sandmere is always telling us she's getting old, but she can still take on Kenny and his friends at basketball and beat them single-handed. How was your day, Jill? Mrs. Sandmere asked me in French as she poured a glass of milk. I answered in English. Pretty good. Mrs. Sandmere made a face. Part of her job is to teach me and Kenny to speak French. She's from Switzerland and can speak three languages. I understand what she says when she speaks French, but I always answer in English because most of the time I'm too busy to think of the right words in French. After my snack, I changed into my favorite jeans, collected my stamp equipment, and headed for Tracy's. Kenny and Mrs. Sandmere were already outside practicing layups. Be back by 5.30! Mrs. Sandmere called as I walked up the driveway. I will. Our street isn't big enough to have a name. There's just a sign saying, Private Road. In our house and Tracy's, Dr. Wu was outside planting tulip bulbs. Tuesday is his day off. Hi, Dr. Wu, I said. He is our family doctor and makes house calls only to us. I like him a lot. He's always smiling. Also, he doesn't gag me with a stick when he looks down my throat. Hi, yourself, he called back to me. Tracy was in the backyard feeding her chickens. She has ten of them and a beautiful white rooster called Friendly, who I love. Sometimes Tracy lets me hold him. His crown is red and it feels like a cat's tongue. I know this because last year one of Tracy's cats licked me. She has about seven cats, but they don't live in the house. They come into the garage to get food and water, and the rest of the time they stay outside. 
Tracy also has two dogs. They live in the house. When the chickens were fed, we went inside to Tracy's room to look over our latest approvals from the Winthrop Stamp Company. We decided we'd each buy two stamps. Tracy showed me the Halloween costume her mother is making for her. Big Bird from Sesame Street. It has yellow feathers and everything. It's beautiful, <clears throat> I said. I still don't have an idea for my costume. We went to work on our albums, trading doubles and fastening loose stamps to the page. And then, right in the middle of licking a stamp hinge, I thought up a costume so clever, I didn't even tell Tracy. I decided it would be a surprise. That night, when my mother and father got home, they brought two big pumpkins with them. I waited until we were halfway through with dinner before I brought up the subject of my Halloween costume. I don't think I want to be a witch this year, I said. <clears throat> I hoped I wouldn't hurt mom's feelings because the witch's costume was hers when she was a kid. It was funny. Pointy toed shoes with silver buckles, a high black silk hat, and a long black robe with a bow at the neck. The whole thing smells like mothballs. Besides, the shoes hurt my feet. You can be whatever you want, my mother said, and she didn't sound insulted. If she doesn't want to wear the witch's suit, can I? Kenny asked. A boy witch, I said. Sure, what's wrong with that? Nothing, Mom told him. I'd love to have you wear my costume. And I'm going to carry a broom, Kenny said. And remember that fake... Cigar from my last year's disguise? I'm going to use that, too. I'll bet there aren't many witches around who smoke cigars. Smoking is dangerous to your health, I said. My cigar's fake, stupid. Don't call people stupid. I gave him a kick under the table and was pleased. Don't kick your siblings, either. And I was pleased to see that Mom grounded out the cigarette she'd been smoking. Yuck. What about you, Jill? My father asked. What do you want to be? Oh, I've been thinking I might like to be a flenser. What's that? Kenny asked. You mean you don't know? I said, never heard of it. With all your facts in the Guinness in the Book of World Records, you never learned about the large the oldest flenser and the youngest flenser and the flenser who did the best job and all that? Dad, Kenny said, she's starting it again. I absolutely love to tease Kenny. Jill, that's enough, my father said. Tell Kenny what a flenser is. Yes, Mom said. I can hardly wait to hear myself. You mean you don't know either, I asked my mother. Never heard the word. Did you? Did you, Gordon? Nope, Dad said. Kenny jumped up. I'll be right back, he told us as he ran out of the room. I knew where he was going, to look up flenser in his dictionary. In a few minutes, he was back carrying it. A flenser strips the blubber off whales, he read, looking at me. That's what you're going to be for Halloween, he asked, like he couldn't believe it. I smiled. <laughs> where did you get that idea, Jill? Mom asked. From this girl in my class, she gave a report on whales. Well, that's certainly original, Dad said. What kind of costume does a flenser wear? Kenny asked. A flenser suit, I told him. E yeah, but what is it made of? Oh, jeans and a shirt and a special kind of hat and a long knife. No knife, my father said. That's too dangerous. Not a real knife, I said. One made out of cardboard. What kind of hat, Kenny asked. A flenser hat, naturally, I told him. Yeah, but what does it look like? I can't begin to describe it. You'll just have to wait and see. I'd wear boots if I were a flenser, Kenny said. For what? I asked him. Because of walking around and all that yucky blubber stuff. Kenny was right. I would have to wear boots, too. After dinner, we went into the living room for our family poker game. I handed out the Monopoly money. We each get $150 from the bank. My father shuffled the cards. Mom cut them, and Kenny dealt. I got a pair of kings and three junk cards. I'm careful not to give my hand away by the expression on my face. You can always tell what Kenny is holding. If it's something good, he makes all kinds of noises and he laughs a lot. Even if he doesn't have anything good, he stays in and takes three new cards. He never drops out when he should because he can't stand not being against the rest of us. 
When it comes to bluffing, my father is the best. Every time he stays in and starts raising, I think he has three aces, and unless I have something really great, I drop out. Then I'll find out Dad didn't have a, even have a pair. My mother is not an experienced poker player. She can never remember which is higher, a flush or a straight. Sometimes I have to help her out. Later, when me and Kenny were in our pajamas and ready for bed, my father said we could carve our pumpkins. Mom had to go to her room because the smell of pumpkin guts makes her sick to her stomach. Last year when I cut out my pumpkin face, it was all lopsided, but this time I got both eyes even and the nose in between. Dad made the teeth for me. Kenny wouldn't let anyone touch his pumpkin, which is why it turned out looking like it had three eyes and no teeth.